All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to value everyone's time this morning, so thank you for coming out. Appreciate that. Did everybody sign in and get copies of the handouts that we have here, the different ones? Um, the new recycling, we know we've, we've, we're trying to help educate people on what we're trying to do there. Nancy, if I could get you to sign in over here. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. You find a table to put that at. Um, first off, I'd like to do introductions. I'm Felicia Hart, Director of Community Development and Tourism for Front Royal, uh, Warren County. Um, thank you again. Thank you all for coming, David. If I can get you to sign in over here and grab all of this. It's, it's hey, this is a laid back meeting. Okay. <laughs> BJ, if you would like to start. Uh, BJ Wilson, Town of Front Royal Director of Finance. Uh, Robert Boyer, Town of Front Royal Public Works Director. Robert Brown, Town Engineer. And Bill Walsh, Town Manager. Maureen Menifee, Down Home Comfort Bakery. Jenny Leeser, Main Street Travel. Sue Lawrence, Cuban Properties. Tim Mark, Front Royal Brewing Company. Harry Bernhardt, Front Royal Brewing Company and Vibe Properties. William Buck, CNC Frozen Treats. Whitlow, BetBuilder.com. Right. Katrina Lee, City National Bank. Jean Flaugher, the owner of Jean's Jewelers and building owner on Main Street. Kelly Walker, the studio. Ann Arena, Gourmet Device, Gifts and Framing. <laughs> Kale McGillis, Front Royal Police Department. Nancy Williams, Williams and Bell. David? David Downs, uh, <laughs> owner of Virginia Beer Museum, proprietor of the Helltown Saloon. It's been a great demand lately. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I know some of you have come in. We're, actually, Mike, can we, can, Jenny, can you do me a favor? Put that sign-in sheet on the back there and we can get everybody to sign in. Um, we do have handouts here for some of those of you who you just pulled in or came in. I appreciate that. Review of the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. Teresa Henry, um, Strokes of Creativity. Yep. Thank you. I'm Sarah Over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tanya Rosenberry with Sona Bank. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Um, everybody had a chance to look at the agenda. If there's topics you'd like to add, things, um, we always have a parking lot, so if it's not on the agenda, things we want to talk about next time, please speak up. Um, this is a chance to ask the questions and get some answers. I want to do, first I'll do a quick review of this. Again, I want to value everyone's time. Some of the things that are going on. Um, <laughs> wanted to let you know, tourism has recently, we just got these numbers from the state, and for Front Royal Warren County, our tourism increased 4.9%, which is, we are now up to $151 million. Um, that relates to 1,706 jobs. You all are in that business, a, minute, a majority of you are in that business, so you know how many employees you have and what that number actually means. Um, and I wanted to break it down a little further. If we didn't have that tourism number, the average homeowner here in town would have to pay $200 more in taxes. So that, that tourism tax helps offset the expenses that localities and citizens have to pay. So that's why as tourism, that's why as businesses, you want, you want these people to come in and spend their money. We appreciate them. We just joined the Appalachian Mural Trail. Hopefully all of you have seen the mural that's on Main Street. Um, and then Scott Turnmeyer has just completed one on South Street. He's going to have a ribbon cutting for his new business this Saturday, I believe it is. Um, and we've got more of these murals in the works. So the Mural Trail we are part of this. It was established in Southern Virginia and North Carolina. We've paid to play with this. Um, it was a minimal cost. And um, so we're getting all kinds of recognition in Southern Virginia and North Carolina from, from the locals there, from the press releases that have been going out that we are now part of this program. So we're excited about that. I want to bring you up to speed. This is a information that is collected monthly um, Joe has staff. We do weekly reports and we do monthly reports. So this is a just part of what planning and zoning. Um, Jeremy couldn't be here this morning, but just part of what Jeremy does, his department. So you can see year over year where we're at. Zoning permits says everything from new windows to fence to decking to all of that is in there. Code enforcement. 
And those arrows just mean we're on track or we're going to be below where we have been in previous years. Land use applications, that's um, just like it sounds, that's for subdivisions, that kind of thing. The code amendments, um, those are the, the deals that we have to go through with um, the uh, codes that we have um, and getting those push, pushed through through uh, town council. So we haven't had any of those. This is where though, if everybody has rules in the books, if they need to be changed, then let's address them and get them changed. So this is what, and that's not only for planning and zoning, that's for all of anything in government. Sign permits um, with 34 and the business licenses. That's 131 just so far this year, businesses, new businesses here in town. So that's good to see. Total permits for the year um, and the little orange one. Hello there. <laughs> Come on in. There's a sign-in sheet and we've got agendas and all here at the front. Um, last year we built, well so far um, in 2019, 26 new homes. I want to bring you, some of you have seen these in the, in the, the um, businesses that are up for sale or rent. As the town, we produce these big over, oversized signs um, to get people to talk. You know, here's, here's an opportunity. So whether it's a great idea or there's a surprise waiting inside, because what we really wanted to help people understand is the town has some really nice incentives available for new business owners. So whether it's the tourism zone, technology, <laughs> thank you, Nancy, <laughs> the technology zone. But this, we, we hope, will get people talking. Um, and uh, it's, it's worked. We've had two folks that have come in from this. Quickly talk about the Community Development Block Grant, an update on that. That includes the Town Plaza, the Facade Improvement Program, the Royal Shandor Greenway, Streetscape, Parking, Signage, Branding, and Marketing. See the numbers here? And all of this is in those handouts. If you need additional copies or anybody has any questions, certainly just let us know. The Town Plaza, purpose of that, we wanted to build a pavilion and build additional public space restrooms down there. We know our, our visitor center is certified nine to five, seven days a week, but after five o'clock it's a sea of Johnny Blues down there, whatever we have to have for those, um, for the events. So we're working on that. The goal is to get people in town, let them use the restrooms without pestering the, the businesses, let them catch their breath, and now they can really enjoy our town. Now they can walk around. So what we're looking at is in that back corner, you see there's, here's the gazebo. So we're looking at placing it in that back corner. This is the pavilion and the outdoor bathrooms that we're looking at adding. So this will give us, when we have events downtown, the, uh, and, and it rains, we've got a place for folks to go. So, and then in each of those bathrooms, there will be two stalls. So we'll get an additional four bathrooms down, down there. And again, that's just another view of it. Will they be locked at night? They will. They were, we're looking at, at electronic locks. As staff, Joe has already installed, had all of us get together, and we're going to have another meeting um, to talk about what we, what's going to have to happen with regards to staff, because now it's toilet paper, it's paper towels, mm -hmm. it's, it's cleaning crews that are have to going to be down there. Um, you know, the police, they know it's down there. The street lights, definitely the electronic locks. We don't, we don't want to cause a problem. <laughs> Are you going to charge for people to use them? No, Good. no. The one, the, and, you, and you're referencing Winchester's. The, yeah. the reason Winchester did that, because of the homeless population. Mm. So to keep them out, and, and there's a self cleaning too, so it helps minimize, you know, helps offset some of that expense. Right. Facade program, we're really excited about this. This is, um, we've got 16. We just signed off. Hopefully, you all saw the video that we did. <laughs> With Mr. Greco across the street, so he'll be we'll be starting his property, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Here we'll get that one started. And um, but one of the things we're and uh, please, if this is a handout up here, um, one of the things we're running into, like a lot of other small towns, is there aren't enough contractors. The jobs are too small. It's government. There's going to be red tape. There's going to be paper paperwork requirements. But it's not. There are 16 properties in this first go round. It's, and all of those have been estimated, they're getting, all of the contractors are getting bid sheets like this to look at. 
And they can pick and choose. They don't have to take all 16. They can pick and choose whatever they would like to do. But please, if you know of any contractors, have them take that poster, um, have them reach out to Jeremy in planning and zoning. We appreciate that. Whoops. Jeremy's got all these extra checks. There's, there, we're, we're talking about the social media again, the advertising. <clears throat> Rural Shandor Greenway, this is one, was a long, for some of you who've been here for a while, this was a long time in the making, um, but it's here, it's done. And we get a lot of visitors who come to and, and actually walk that trail. It's gorgeous. The streetscape improvement, that's developed the, um, for a long-term plan for developing the, the new sidewalk, street lights, and utilities that need to go in downtown. Uh, we, it, we're like anybody, it's our home. We have to refreshen it up every now and then. So that's what we're working on. The RFP is being advertised right now. We have parking and alley improvements. We know we have, a, we've got a parking study that'll be coming out. Um, but we have to clean up some of our messes, some of our more um, unsightly areas. Uh, it's a good thing. That means people want, we need, we need additional parking, so we need people to go on this next block over. And we need to make it user friendly. We, you know, if you're a single mom, do you really want to be pushing that baby carriage there when it's kind of dark? No. Mm -hmm. um, single dads even. I mean, nobody wants to do that. So mm -hmm. that's what we're looking at is how do we clean that up? How, new street lights, um, you know, new islands. How do we just tell the general public where they can park? Because right now you don't know if it's public or private. So you don't, you don't know where you're doing or going loud to park. Wayfinding signage. <clears throat> right now, um, it's been around a long time. It's color coded. Um, you've got, you know, 10 seconds to decide if you're an outsider where you want to go with an 18 wheeler behind you or traffic lined up. Um, it, there's, we're cleaning that up. Um, as I said, refreshing and, and looking at things. They worked then, they don't now. So this is what we are working on. This is new gateway signage that will be coming in. We're partnering with this on Warren County. We have a game plan. It's consistent. Um, we're not going to. It's not going to be them and us. It's it's our community. This is us. So we're working on that. So we've got the new gateway signs and then the trailblazer signs that we're working on. This is what they would look like when you see when you're coming into town. Branding and marketing. We've done a lot with this. We've uh, a brand new tourism website. We've done some new ads. In different places where before we've done it was a pretty much a shotgun approach just trying hoping we can put an ad out there we have no idea to how to how did it, did it work who's who are we hearing from so we're gonna be we're working on being more strategic we've done a southern living ad we've done a golf magazine ad um, uh, the Blue Ridge outdoors we're getting ready to reprint 80,000 I shouldn't say reprint it's a brand new uh, print for the uh, visitors guide We've got some lighted sign boxes that are, you've, that are going up around town, new uh, installation, and a new kiosk outside the visitor center. So again, if you're after 5 o'clock and you come downtown, nobody can help you at the visitor center because we're closed. We'll have an outdoor kiosk there that will have a map um, and help people understand where the restaurants, where do you want to go at. And, we'll, and those will also be incorporated into the lighted signs that we're installing on Kid Lane and some of these other entrance points to downtown. Calendar of events coming up for October. Um, these are all on the town's website. They change all the time. We add new things all the time. So you can see the ones that we've highlighted in red are the ones that are going to be affecting Main Street. <clears throat> and of course, in October, we have our uh, big Hall hometown Halloween. So I hope you're all prepared for that. Mm -hmm. We're getting lots of people, businesses who aren't here on Main Street, calling when we set up tables. Getting Front Royal on the map, working closely with the new leadership at the EDA. This is extremely important because it gets us out there. We have, we're, we're working with the VEDP, which is the Virginia Economic Developers Association. They're the ones, if somebody's coming from Texas or some other state, they're contacting VEDP. And they want to know where are the sites, where, where, where do you have this pad ready that we can come in and build. So we're working with the EDA, VEDP, to make sure anything that we have here in town, I shouldn't say anything, it's, it's the larger sites, the 25 acres or more is how they're, how they're tearing us. 
um, are on this map and that people can find us. So here's an opportunity in the town and what we can do. That's, um, and some of the information was outdated, so we're, again, we're working on that. We just hosted um, eight attendees through, that are participate or had eight attendees attend a focus group. This was a grant we got through, it was part of a regional grant through Go Virginia. And what it does, which they, they hired a group to come in and go to each of the localities. Rob, you were there. Look, we've got two other folks who were there. Three or, three, three or four people attended that. that um, you thought it was worthwhile? You got good questions asked? What they wanted to do was work, yes. workforce. Um, you, you want to expand on a little bit what you, what you were? Me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it was a great experience. We all sat down and we talked about why do we feel people come to our town and what gets them to stay. So one of my favorite um, case studies that I talked about was uh, River and Peak Outfitters. I know those guys came here vacationing, uh, floating out on the river, and then they saw a need that, hey, we could pop a shop up, uh, right up here on the, on, what is that, South, South, South Street, Street. Yeah. and they've been successful. Um, they had left the hustle and bustle of the Northern Virginia area, and they stayed here. So I talked to the folks about that. They wanted to know what is going to maintain the talent here in this area. Yeah. And John and Kristen were invited, but they don't have I know, to but I did, I, out of the blue, talk about them, yeah. so that was really neat. Yeah, and if you haven't stopped in, they get their new puppy here today. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that was great. That, that's good. But this is the stuff that we're working on and partnering on to make sure that we're, we're being heard on behalf of the EDA and, and they're recognizing us. We're um, competing against a number of other localities to bring in desirable businesses. So this is, we have to up our game. This is what we have to do. Um, and still work to do, obviously. Oops. That would just go back. This is what I wanted to end on for my, my presentation right now. Despite everything that is going on, we have to up our game. We have to make the positive comments. We've got to be the voice of why to come to Front Royal and move here or open a business here or come and visit and spend your money with us. We've been working for about a month with a couple that is looking um, to purchase some properties here on Main, or a property here on Main Street. This was the email that they sent We've identified this quaint town of Front Royal as the next business catapult for Virginia tourism. We've visited on several occasions and have seen evidence of an inflection point, a positive change with much more opportunities ahead. This is what outsiders are saying about us, and they don't live that far away. So despite all of this other stuff, that's us. That's what we want to be known for. That's what we have to keep our head up and say, we're moving on. So I wanted to leave it on that positive note, at least for my section. And I hope we can leave this meeting on a positive note. Um, let's talk about, let's see, events on Main Street. I, let's, this is just going to be an open discussion. I know some folks had some questions um, from our last meeting. Um, what, Joe, do you want to talk about the intent and what you'd like to achieve from this discussion? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I was uh, hoping to have some council representation today. Um, I thought that did. Yeah. And they, um, every, every, all postcards were mailed out, hand delivered uh, to everyone. So, so um, what I wanted to uh, be in that there is no representation here at the moment, what I'd like to do is just get your thoughts, comments, what you, what you like about what we can do with event planning on Main Street ideas of changes, additions, or whatever. Uh, my thought is is that whatever I take today, I would take to count council and put on a work session for them to discuss and hear some more of the feedback. So uh, I'm basically going to be a big listening uh, instrument today to take what I hear back to town council and see what they want to do moving forward. Yeah. So, in, in, a, in my last meeting with you, we um, talked about, you know, all, all of us get massive emails, and a lot of you have time and a lot of you don't, but I don't have time to go to the site and look up all your events that you have going on all over the town, 
and I had asked that we possibly could get an email at the first of each month as business owners, building owners, to let us know what's going to be happening for the entire month. It would be very helpful, very helpful in us planning for our clientele who is coming in from different areas. And I would really like to see that go into place. Did we do did, did that something that we yeah, could do possibly? Um, staff's working on something that's a little bit more than what you're asking. Good. Uh, I've got staff working on it. Actually, Felicia's <laughs> taking the lead on this, but we're going to be pushing out a, a monthly business newsletter, basically. Good. And we and the idea behind that is not just to um, notify businesses of what events are going in town, downtown, wherever in town. Absolutely. But the also idea is to maybe spotlight existing businesses. And, and, you know, that's the thing I think we're missing the boat on is we try to publicize and recognize new businesses coming in, but we don't really take a spotlight on existing businesses. There are anchor businesses that have been here for that long. So we're hoping in October we can get this newsletter out. And it, it, I think it's going to be a good instrument for everybody. And the idea is to focus not just on downtown businesses, but all businesses. And so... I think if you allow staff, we're working on it diligently. I think in October we'll push our first monthly newsletter out. And I, I'm assuming, in my opinion, it's going to be fluid for the first couple months to see what works, what doesn't work, get feedback, because we want to produce something that is useful for everybody in the community, every business community, uh, a business partner. So um, it is coming. It's, uh, I am one not to do a knee-jerk reaction. I, I like to put everything in together for that we don't, you know. So we're close to that, and I suspect it in October. What format will that be in, Judd? Uh, well, it's going to be a, a newsletter, but we plan to try to do email blasts as well as mailing. Mm -hmm. We still have to work out that connection point to find out who, because, you know, some people prefer email blasts, some people prefer paper. So <laughs> we're going to have to find a happy medium for everybody. <coughs> And Joe, on that note, I should have a proof today, our first proof to look at. So, yeah. so October is, is where we're shooting for. I have a question. How, how do you get the contact information for people? Because there seems to be a huge disconnect. I mean, but for Jean, I wouldn't have even known this meeting happened. And I'm right on Crescent. I've never received a single thing from the town, tourism, anything at my business the to participate starts? in. Nope, nothing. So, I, but I have to fill out for the town when I get my license. The town sends me, please update your information. I have. I've provided my email. From, I'm right there on Crescent, right across from a school. But I've never received anything. So I don't know how many other businesses right Everybody here in town it? have never received anything either. Did everybody ask a postcard for this? No. Well, there's, you know, so we need to do some, we yeah. need to do a little better. David's on, they're, they're on Chester. I mean, he's right in town. Right. I mean, we're finding these things okay. out from other people, secondhand. We I have, feel like if you're going to send out a, a blast, it, so it should really include everybody. And, and rest assured, because I get the mailing list from the, the business licenses, I hand put all of those labels on sitting there watching TV yeah. one night, so I know everybody's name was on those labels. The, I even do a test mail. To myself to make sure we get it sometimes it takes me three days sometimes the last mailing we did the we lost over 300 pieces of mail that were never delivered so we do the best we can thank you Nancy for speaking up and we'll make sure we can try and address this yep yeah, it, it will be it will be uh, a topic after tonight after today. I guess what but, I'm saying is uh, there seems to be a mechanism already where you're gathering my information right but it seems to not be again funneled to another source I mean I'm required to give my information for every business license so then why isn't that same database then being used we're, to because of well, we'll, we'll look into it okay and we need to close that circle because obviously okay. I don't want to produce something that it doesn't reach everybody right. so yeah we'll look into that yeah and try to I know one of the situation. things we're working on is adding emails requests to the business licenses because we don't have that on there currently um, so that we can get to that aspect of it too and add that yeah so thank you Joe so I've been trying to create a tourist attraction for about a year and a half on private property at no expense to the taxpayers uh, by enlarging uh, what's offered at the Virginia Beer Museum and have had four councilmen obstruct and vote against it. Do you have any suggestions on you know, how I can work better with the town council so we can accomplish some of these mutual goals that we all have here? Um, I, I can't speak for town council. 
Um, I'm trying to draw back on, on the issues that, that were last dealt with on your request. You know, I, I think, it, um, in my opinion, a, a new council comes on. Uh, I, I think it's an opportunity to present your case again. Uh, in my opinion, um, you have some new players, but also things change. So I think that it, it, you, are, you should be afforded the opportunity to make another proposal, and that would be my recommendation. Yes, I will. So what is the town doing to offset some of this bad publicity that is going on? that is hurting businesses, and it's hurting numerous businesses that have been here. Um, are, are they doing anything to try to send out some more positive information? How are they handling that? Um, you know, as we're talking about being positive here, which I think is very important, making positive statements and really being, being positive, I think that's very important. But what is the town doing to help us to do that? We, we are currently trying to develop a strategic communications plan. We're trying to figure out what the best path is for front row as fast as we can. But what's most important is we need to speak with one voice. And that's what we're working on right now internally. It's just as well as like we're trying to work on a, on, a, on a press release for the events that happened yesterday. So we are trying to make a push to have one voice and get out there and get the positive stuff. It's... it's um, um, I know it's not happening fast enough, but it is on it is on their radar. We are working at it, and um, with without giving many details, we are still trying to form one person to speak with one voice, and we're close to that. It's just we have to identify somebody in staff that can do that and be point, because you're right. We have to get the facts out there. We have to change the conversation. I know that. Um, and, and so town council is concerned about that. I've talked to the mayor numerous times, even last week and on Monday, about this. It is on their mind, and we're, we just haven't got anything off the ground yet, but we're working as fast as we can to get the positive message out there. One of the things that I try to, you know, um, start, and it is, I, I'm very pleased with it, is our new employee recognition program. Because what I did was, um, there was so much negative stuff going on, I started asking staff, give me some positives every week. What's happening? And once I started seeing those and seeing just employees that are on, on, the, you know, on the ground doing the work and getting comments back from citizens that they stepped up and they went above and beyond, I recognized, you know, we're missing this. And so that is one of the part of the things with the Pride and Performance uh, Employee Recognition Program is trying to bring forward that we do have employees here that give everything they have to support our citizens, and we need to recognize that. So that's one piece of the puzzle, but it doesn't solve it, and I understand that we need to be better at getting out the positive message and countering false information. Okay, two things. One, we don't have a town spokesperson at this point, and this has been going on for over a year. I feel like we're too late now. We're on the cover of the Washington Post, for God's sakes, today. And we still don't have a town person that can speak for the town after a year. I mean, that's shocking to me as a business owner that we don't have somebody at the ready, ready to go, when we all knew for a year that this was breaking out. And two, I don't know a more positive message that we could be sending right now, other than the fact that, that in this room sits the hero of the last year, which is the town finance person that, that finally broke all this out when nobody else would touch it. So I, I think as a town, why are we not distinguishing ourselves from the county who all just got arrested to say it's the town, and it is, it's the town that finally put their foot down and found out all about all this that got the state police involved that are getting this resolved. It's the town. And we're not promoting that at all, and I don't know why we're hiding from that. And I don't know why the first employee of the century is not the man sitting right there. Um, I, I don't, I don't, as, as business owners, that would certainly promote our downtown, that we as a town did not stand for what was happening to, to distinguish ourselves from the county. But honestly, if we don't have a spokesperson already, I mean, I mean, it's too late for that. I mean, we're, it's already out there. I don't, I mean, if we don't have somebody ready at 7.30 this morning to say, to make a statement, I mean, it, it's all over. 
I hear you. We, we are making a presence out there with, uh, there is somebody on staff that does that. The question is, we need somebody that can watch it 24-7, and that's what we're working on. Uh, so we're out there. We're trying to counter it, but it's not, um, we're, I, I'll be honest with you, we're not doing the best job we can, and we're working on that, and that's all I can say at this point, that we are, and, co and council is aware of the issue, and um, we should get something resolved soon. But we are, we do have a voice out there. It's just not on the 24-7 and combating everything that's out on social media at this moment. But thank you, Nancy, for recognizing BJ and his due diligence and what they tried to, the difference they tried to make there. You said you wanted to take something to the council for, and I know people are going to be upset with me when I say it, but that's okay. Uh, tourism. I mean, we, we, we put a lot of stock into tourism in our community. Uh, and how can, how can we do better? I mean, and I think everyone in this room can do better by being the best person they can be and, and, and running their business above average and, and, and to the point to where people want to come back to our area. So I know we have a lot of events. I know parking's an issue. I, I, you know, we're shutting streets down, uh, shutting the gazebo area, the back parking lot with the Ballards. It's a great idea. Doesn't work. We need to bring the Ballards up to the front and just shut the, the complete gazebo over area up when you do anything down there because putting them halfway in it is a cluster for everybody that comes in you got people pulling in off of main street they think they can go through then they're backing out you got people running around it doesn't work okay that's that's first off we've just put ballards up so we can close our main street we have people complaining about main street being closed so my proposal to take the council is from next year for next year, we go one year trial, a one year trial, and I'd like to see first Saturday done down in Front Royal, as every other community in our area is doing a first Friday from time to time, or they're doing the third Friday or the third Sunday, or whatever it is. Let's put this together, let's come together as a community and grow together, because together is how we're going to be strong. Us being divided, us not getting the answers from the town, us not looking at our county as leaders that we have. We're, we're business owners that have to say, this is what we want, okay? Tourism comes to town. The events bring tourism to town. Not only do the events bring tourism to town, the events expand existing businesses because it gives them a chance to put their information out there to show people, this is who we are, this is what we have to offer. Please come see me. If you want something, I'm here for you. Please come in and see me. I'm one of those businesses that got raised up because of the events in town. I am one that puts on the events. We've been doing the car shows for the last three years, the first Saturday of every month. Well, you know what? It's time to not have to deal with obstacles in the gazebo area every single month that something's going on. So let's shut Main Street down. Let's do first Saturday starting next year. And let's bring all of our businesses in Front Royal to our downtown area and show them the heart and the soul that we have in our community. Because that's what we are. Front Royal is the heart and soul of Warren County. Y'all want to promote positive, let's promote positive. That's what we need to do. The blood flows through our heart. Let's let the love flow through our heart right here in front row. That still is not going to handle the parking issues. Parking is always going to be an issue. It doesn't matter what we do. So we, we need the people. We need the love. We need the happiness. That's what, we, that's what we need here. And the only way we're going to get that is if all of us in this room agree that that's what we want to do to move forward. Well, I don't think love and happiness is closing down Main Street 12 times a year, plus all the other times that you have it closed for events. So, I mean, my concern at the last meeting was how many times we're closing Main Street in the course of the year. And I was told that the code was changed so they could close it a whole lot more than it used to be. So I'm concerned about the number of times we're closing the street, especially when we don't have things all the way down the street, just on one end of and the street. And that's my proposal so, for doing first Saturday. So everything up and down Main Street is open. All you have it. to do is open your doors. 
So all you have to do is open your doors and tell people you're here. When every event takes place, stand up outside of your store and say, here I am, come in and see me, be inviting. That's all you have to do. What, I'm, what my intent is today is to get everybody's feedback and then present it to town council because at the end of the day, town council is in charge of the code. They're the ones, they are the catalysts to change the code. So what I'm trying to do today, thank you, Mr. Hogg. No, sir. And I just want to get this input. There may be contradictions and opposition, but I want to get everybody's feedback for that I can present it to town council and give you all as well a platform um, to talk to them as well. Well, it's a shame they didn't come. Yeah, they that's were the one thing you need to take to them, Joe. They, they should have been here. They need to hear how everybody feels, not just one or two of the most vocal people. And it shouldn't all have to come through you. They should be here listening to what we have to say. I understand. So I'm going to take the torch. And, uh, and I will, uh, and I will put it to a work session in October. I will. I, I can definitely do that. Shame on that. And um, but it's good to have this conversation because I believe that you know what we changes we made were an improvement from last code changes. But I do believe that there could be a few tweaks here and there. I mean, when working with Hawk, we noticed a few little things that were just kind of you know, you know. So. I think it's it's good to take another good look at it, and so what I really would like to get is just feedback like I'm getting now for the at least I can brief counsel for that when we do have that work session and they do give the opportunity for the, for the businesses and the citizens to speak about it, they'll at least have some knowledge and can do some homework prior to the meeting. Has there ever been a suggestion or offer or anything of a town parking garage? Ever? I mean, it's a talk. three or four, three story limit in town, and yet we've got these flat open lots that right. take up a lot of space, and then now we're looking at more parking. Like, why do we not have even a single parking garage like any other area in Virginia? Yeah, the parking garage. Um, we have looked at it, I think it may be 20 million, I don't know. Mm -hmm. One of the things is with the parking study that was done recently by the Northern Virginia Shando Regional Commission showed that we have excellent parking on the north side here of Main Street, back here at Peyton Street parking mm -hmm. lot. What we noticed is over on the south side on Jackson Street, it's a lot of private and so part of this study is going to take a look at the parking availability over here on Jackson Street to see if potentially we could change the environment, add more landscaping, make more public parking access. How are you going to make more public parking access if it's private parking? Well, that is what, and that is the thing that's part of that study is to engage the business owners to see if they would be willing, and then this is just only hypothetical, but, but we willing to lease that space, we come in, and I think it's done in Strasburg as well, right? Felicia, that they did this part where they lease private parking. Correct. They came in, they put in new landscaping, they put in new lighting, they made it more inviting. It helped both the businesses and the community because that's what we're missing. We've got a beautiful conduit here on this side of Main Street that funnels people this way, but we've got a disconnect on this side. So this is an area that part of that parking study is going to be looking into. So it's we're paying for a parking study. I don't know how much that is. We're paying for new landscaping. We're going to pay to lease private spots, all because we don't want to pay twenty million for a parking garage. I mean, at some point, you're putting a bandaid on a dam, and you're spending, 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 spending money little by little. And in the end, you could have just bit the bullet, built the parking garage, and solved the problem. Is the town council looking at that? I mean, we keep spending out money for these studies and for these audits and for these attorneys and da da da. No offense to myself. <laughs> but can we step back and look at the big picture that I, it just seems like nobody's looking at the big picture here to I mean I, I guess take that to the town council like if we're trying to be more fiscally responsible we're paying for a study we're paying to lease spaces we're paying for to make it look prettier too, too I mean and, and in the end we could have just paid for the parking garage and solved the problem I mean yeah I'd say the, think the, about that the parking study is part of the grant, mm -hmm. community development block grant, so that is included in our block grant. As far as why it's been any additional dollars, there's nothing been authorized by town council. All this money that we're doing now in studying the parking is by the grant, 
So that is helping us. It's not coming out of our general fund. So I, there is a plus here. I, you know, and they are aware of the parking. This parking study will identify what's most cost effective at this time. They've done study, they've, as part of that study, they looked at what the traffic was and what the parking availability was in all the areas of Main Street. And so, I mean, it's a process that we're in the middle of. If the study says that there's a parking garage need to be, then that's the direction we'll take. I mean, are they given how many festivals there are, how many times it closes down, how many events are in town, or it's is it just included, like, yeah. these are the number of businesses on Main Street and this is the parking that's needed on a daily basis? Because there's, those are different, you know? Like, when you have that influx or the leaf times, I mean, those are different. Yeah. Like, and that's all incorporated into that, that parking analysis. We, we can't afford to leave anything out. Linda's part of the, this, this team and several others are too. We, we've talked with the court system. How fast is the court system growing? You know, what's, where, how, how many additional court cases, how many parking spaces is that going to be going to be required? Or we're looking at the new businesses that are, the potential new businesses opening up. So all of that has been figured in to this equation. Um, forward thinking, we try and do, here's, here's what we can do. This is the cost in one year. This is the cost in two years. Here's what it's going to cost us in five years. So we've pulled together that, and, and it, it, Joe is really good at making us being proactive and having to look down the road. It's here's the immediate cost, here's what the long-term cost is going to be. We can, you're, you're right, so many times governments, localities, we all do it, nickel and dime, and we, we, fix, we put a little band-aid on there. But can we look at the big picture? Because things like, when I say landscaping, that's, We've got some. We've got those great big trash containers over there. That's. We don't want the general public to. I mean, that's. That's. We. We need to hide that a little bit. So, when we're talking about those kind of things, it's cleaning ourselves up. But it's adding islands. It's traffic calming that's back there. It's new signage so people know where to park at, and taking advantage of that. But you're right. We have to look at. It's not just an immediate fix. Where are we going to be at in three years? What's the cost to our community if we're not addressing these issues now? So that's what we're working on, Nancy. And you're welcome. I can send you, I'll give you, kick you an email when we're having these meetings. You're more than welcome to sit in. All these meetings are open to the public. So please, anybody, we can, we'll, we'll send notices out, whatever you'd like to do. We can, the more we can have at the table to challenge us, to question us, to make sure, because now you're part of the team. That's what we need. Why don't you add all of those meetings to the monthly newsletter? We are, yes. Okay. Yeah. All of the, the grant team meetings, it's all the planning commission meetings. Those are very important. The planning commission, the BZA, all of those meetings are, and they're added on the calendar. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Just a point of information. We did do a parking study, parking garage study, kind of quickly, in the planning grant process, and it was cost prohibitive at the time. F through that. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So that, we've looked at it once, at least. I hear you. I will be the conduit to council and relay everything that I hear today. That's why I'm saying I'm uh, just let me be the, the, the conduit, the catalyst to take what, what your concerns are, parking, events, and I will bring it forth to council in October. But your voices are really important to be heard. I mean, you know, Joe's going to write it down. Here's, here's what we talked about. You know, you, you have the face-to-face -face with elected officials. You can make the difference. You have that ability. But they need to come so we can have the face-to-face. -face. But, but now you can talk to them <laughs> and invite them to our next one when we have that one. So okay. back to your... Yeah, all I, I, all I can say is I will give a full report to town council of this meeting and relay everybody's concerns, issues. So, so just to kind of focus on what we've what we've heard here uh, a little bit there the ability to have more events is honestly going to draw more people in my opinion mm -hmm. um, pinpointing on what those pain points of the local businesses are that that maybe don't necessarily see more events being a good thing we heard parking is there any you know are there any other things that that we can focus on to make those events better more welcome uh, for everybody around. Um, obviously, parking is the, the, one of the main ones. We just heard it. But I think in order to draw the people that we're talking about, we need needing to draw both business, both, both people coming into the area. We're going to have to be, in my opinion, more welcoming. We're going to have to be more 
more looser with some of those. That's just, again, just my opinion. Um, some people think maybe we have enough, but I, I think we're going to need to, to have more if we're going to get to where we're talking about where we're wanting to get to. So as we talk about tourism, you know, and I'm right across the street. So you're a tourist and you're coming to our town and you have no place to park so that you can go in to uh, our downtown tourist office to find out what's going on because that complete parking lot is gone. I mean, how, how are we promoting tourism if we don't even have a place for them to park? But that's well, only when the, when the main street's closed that they can't park and walk in there. Okay. Well, look sure. at how many times it's closed, too. Mabel, I mean, well, I'm right across. I see. And the other thing is, if you want to close it that many times, once a month or more, and you're still inviting the same people down for the same event each time, how is that helping? I don't see how that's a help to have the same group coming every time. I think it needs to be a varied group that we're trying to bring in. When you go into Harrisonburg, you park away from the downtown area and you walk. When you go into Manassas, you park away from the downtown area, you walk. I lived in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You park away from it and you walk. In New Orleans, you walk the streets. It's not a parking issue for businesses on Main Street or in any other area not to have patrons come to their place when you have events. When you have 5,000 people in a, in a confined area, you have an opportunity to reach 5,000 people. If you just leave the streets open and people are driving by, it's just like a racehorse running a race. You have blinders and you will never see because I can't stop and see that you have a sign in your window that says it's for sale. You have got to get out and walk the streets. So for those of them that cannot walk the streets, then, then sure, we can look at that and you need a wheelchair accessible or you need this, then, then, then we can look at that. But if you are capable of walking the streets a block or two down the street, then get up out of your vehicle and walk the two blocks. If I want to come into your store, I just went to Harrisonburg and I walked all over Harrisonburg. I went into seven, seven stores and from the outside, the other five stores that, eh, didn't look like I wanted to go in there, so I didn't go in. So if I want to go into your store, if it's inviting enough to offer me the availability to come into your store, then I'm coming into your store. You have to have people to succeed in business, and that's just simple business 101. Without people, we don't have it. The events that I do do bring tourism from all over. The wine and craft brings tourism from all over. The car shows bring tourism from all over. These people are here, they're spending money in our area that would not be spending the money in our area that goes to our tax dollars being spent so our taxes don't get raised. So our water bill, it keeps going up, but we have those revenues coming in so we don't have to flip the bill on all these studies and all these parking issues that, that we have. That's the problem. We need to open our eyes and look at a 10-year growth. A 10-year growth from now, if we stay where we are right now, we're a dead town. We're, we're a dead town. We have got to look 10 years out, and 10 years out is life and, and, and fortune in our community. And if you're not looking 10 years out, I'm sorry. Then, then, then you're going backwards. Hi. <laughs> good to see you. It's good to see you, Mike. I'm a little late to the party here, but um, just from a from an observation perspective, and please correct me if I am not as observant as I thought I was. But when I go to other towns for for events, and they don't have and and they have some some that either do or don't have similar parking as us. There's signage around the area that directs me to where I can park. And then some of those places also have made accommodations for people who have um, challenges to be able to get from where they are to where they need to go. I, I don't see that here. I see some people pulling up to me at the light and rolling down the window and saying, hey, buddy, you know where I can park around here for this event? And I say, yeah, sure, follow me. 
and I take them over to the to the Valley Health parking lot or to the government center here or whatever. And if we already have that signage for our events, then please correct, please educate me. But I don't know that we've ever had that on during our main event day and said, hey, this this way to parking for these are our, our festival of leaves parking this way and then guiding people to those areas. So when they finally show up here, they, they haven't already smoked a carton of cigarettes to stop at eight bars. <laughs> Not to suggest that I've done that. But. <laughs> I'm used to the driver of that. I'm used to the driver. <laughs> um, I, I think um, I need to provide a conduit for you all to town council. One of my thoughts and just running through my head right now is maybe um, have a public hearing so that you would have a platform to express your concerns to council. Um, we normally don't do that in a work session, but I'm just going to talk to the mayor and see. But the idea is, is that the council members need to hear your concerns. Now, I'm going to relay them, but it's always better when it comes from the source. And so I am, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a platform and I will, if you leave your contact information, I'll let you know when that is because really I hear you, I understand your concerns, but <coughs> there's one more step we have to take those concerns to and get them to get it in a, in a debate forum. And, and, and that's going to take place in November on election day. <laughs> right, but and, and then we need to have another meeting about a month after election day with the people that but, hopefully can actually make that right. happen and, my, and give you the resources yeah, to do what you need to do. Um, and my thought though that this would happen in October. Um, the thing is, for, remember for town council, the only position that's up for election in November is the mayor. Yeah. That is the only one. So who you address in October. Maybe one last the interim mayor won't be there after November 6th, uh, and then there will be a new seat there, our new mayor. So um, What's I don't want to. What's the date of that in October? Um, um, it's 15th. Y'all aren't doing the first. Right. Um, to do a true public hearing, I want to get it out in the paper. So either, and we normally don't do it in a work session. The work session is October 21st. Um, I was thinking on October 28th is an official meeting at the government center, um, and for that you can actually be heard, be recorded, and if they have any questions, they can rewatch the video. Um, and so I, I'll, I will tell you this: I will make a commitment to put that as a public hearing, maybe a public input period, on October 28th at seven o'clock at the government center of commerce. Please come and voice favor opposition concerns about event planning and parking and let's bring it to the table and I think that will be the catalyst when when the community speaks that will be the catalyst that will push further investigation and further debate on changing what council desires I know that when we went through this two years ago <laughs> There was compromises among all, you know, where we started is not where we finished, but it was a compromise. And so I think it's, it's an opportunity now to re-bring re this up, talk about it some more, maybe get some fresher ideas. There are some new people on council uh, that weren't there on the last go-around. So I think it's an opportunity for everybody to have some input and try to try to get some change if change is, is what, it, what the consensus is. So October 28th, I will put it on the agenda for public comment, a specific thing that we're, when that item comes up on the council meeting, they know what they're going to hear. They know what the subject matter is, because truly that is where, in my opinion, where the rubber meets the road. I hear your concerns, and I, and I, I apologize. I thought I was going to have council here today. Could we possibly look into adding some new events, something new and different? We're, the town is always open to new events. Well, any, uh, any, 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 organiz <laughs> any organization that wants to come, 
Well, any organization, I mean, that's what that's what the town is for. Any organization that wants to have events, it, it's, a, it's a pretty simple permitting process compared to other localities. And they just, they, they talk with Joe on those things. Joe's door's open. I, I think this is great. I love to see this room filled. I really do. Because I want to... I want to hear, and I want to be able to, to channel that information up to council. Um, so I, I just want to thank you all, uh, before I forget, for coming out this morning. I mean, we changed it to see, you know, because I was getting a little concerned. You know, we weren't getting all the participation in the evening hours and recognizing that a lot of you all have businesses. And so, you know, so we definitely want, and I do want some feedback on your thoughts of meeting times. Because I think it's important even though the dialogue, it's important to keep this channel open and dialogue open. Uh, can we revisit the uh, political people down at the end of the street? Could those wonderful people be moved to the front of the courthouse? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a legal question. I realize they have a right to do whatever they want to do, but we all have a right to... Uh, continue our businesses on Main Street and I really don't think that when a tourist comes to town and they see that and have to walk through that whatever the issues are I agree it and makes it very difficult let's bring that up as a topic of conversation as well because it's still in the same thing of event planning I just the, the political okay. debates are very um, there are there are situations there are in themselves for, for them freedom to go, of speech government so. center. They can go there too, mm -hmm. where there's more traffic. Mm -hmm. Well, we can uh, bring that up as a topic of discussion. Thank you. As well, I honestly, I really don't have the answers today, I, I and I can't commit I to anything. I'm just going to provide a conduit to allow everybody an opportunity well, to speak. I mean, I agree. It's almost the complete opposite of what we're trying to accomplish on Main Street. We're trying to make it vibrant. We're trying to make it welcoming. And as Joe said, we appreciate you asking these questions. We're Joe will work to get the answers and have our elected officials, because and, and the attorneys, all of that has to be figured in. It's, well, you know, they, they don't have to be down in front of the visitor center. Let them go in front of the government center or the courthouse, where that's the seat of government. That's what they're everybody's yeah. complaining about. So let them go there. All right. Anything else on events? That we want to talk about? Okay. Well, we got Taste of the Town Friday night. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, Taste that's, the town Friday that's night. I was hoping Fravor would be here. We've got them on their agenda to brag about themselves. Um, so, yeah, we've, we have we do have that. Um, I know we had a couple questions about parking enforcement. Somebody wanted to ask a question on that. Who wanted to? I have a question. So, they were really, really, and as you come into the back of my building, uh, which is um, the town parking lot. I want to thank them for painting and stopping because what was happening is people were parking the entire entranceway into my parking lot, but they painted it. Now, my question here, and I guess I'm going to ask you, Kale, is they're still parking there on those lines that they're not supposed to be parking on? Just call. I don't want to make a big deal out of it because I don't know some we of them. You can't fix it if we don't move, Gene. You got to just call. Just call and take we, care of it. We've been calling for years. For? for yes, they walk you as well. Yeah. For okay. someone to come and ask them to leave. And the, the people that are parking there don't care. They just okay. park. Well, they, they don't be, care. They can, they can be towed. With, well, you go out and say, would you like me to call to have you towed? I've got signs up because we were we were required to put signs up to say if you park here you'll be towed. If they're parked on your property and you've got a sign They're up? parked in the yellow lines at the Not end on your of property. No, that's a, that's a town. The well, can't they park on no the parking lines. in the yellow lines? We ask them to do that a number Paint of on the times ground, and no they parking. They won't put no parking on there. They just put the yellow lines <laughs> And the town's thought was that people know that yellow lines mean no parking. <laughs> really? Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> but when we've called, when we've called, and it's been a while since I've called the police, I just stopped calling because they say, just ask them to move. So that then I go out and I ask move. them to move and I get called all kinds of names. So I just stopped asking. Call. Just call. We'll, we'll send an officer down. Thank you, is it too late to get proper signage on the outside of town telling people where to direct people where to park? 
I know a really nice man who's currently operating a camera that does signage. We're, we're working on that, Mike, and you came in late and you missed our presentation. So we're I'm, working I'm always on that. late. That's, no, that's, <laughs> that's the parties. You're good. Um, we're working on that. That's that's part of we We do have the parking signs around here to indicate to get people to some of the parking lots. But from a um, the wayfinding signage, part of that is looking at all of our signs that we have, cleaning them up. Where do we need to put additional signs? We're working to enhance that on the visitors um, for, with regards to our town uh, website for the, the tourism, excuse me, the, the tourism website um, and some other outlets that we're doing. Um, one of the things, and you're right about these events, if I, if we tend to see ourselves in cocoons. When we host these events, we're worried about where do we block the street and all the signage inside once we've got people here. So where do they buy their tickets? Where do they go? Who's, who's, where's, where's restaurants? That kind of thing. We have to look at ourselves from the outside of those bollards. So when we've got all these people driving down Commerce Avenue and Royal Avenue and they driving by and they go, ooh, what's going on down there? There's nothing on the outside of those bollards to welcome them to the event, to even tell them what the event is. So that's the kind of stuff we have to look at and work with the, the folks who are hosting these events is how do we get that word to the outside people who are driving by? so that we can capture additional guests. I'm just trying to help this nice lady here not be angry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a simple man. You're a good soul. <laughs> uh, Felicia, what, what they do see going down the road is a sign that say, no event parking. No event parking. No event parking. They don't see inviting signs that says, park here. Mm -hmm. but that's and, and a no event parking is a negative. It, and it is, but that's the Instead property of saying, owners. Instead of saying, park here and come into my restaurant and have a breakfast while you wait for the thing to go, yeah. people look at, because no restaurant on Main Street has enough parking for their customers. Mm -hmm. They have to rely on public parking. And I don't understand why they put up chains across their parking lot and say no parking, no event parking, when an event's going on knowing that 80% of their customers park in public parking. Mm -hmm. And so... The seven cars that could park in your lot, most people feel obligated when they park in front of a restaurant to go in. Mm -hmm. I do anyway. I won't park. I might. I might stay there a little longer than what I wanted to stay, right? <laughs> but I would normally go into the restaurant to eat and then just leave my car there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's just me. But I do think that no event parking is a negative sign. And what it should say is, don't park here, but go down the street a block, and there's plenty of free parking. So. I think we need to work on that as well and mm -hmm. get that negative, you know, instead what, of saying yes, no parking here, just say event parking down there. I just think we need to work on that a little turn, bit. Turn the That's frown upside down, make it a smiley face. Yes, break. please. Yes, yes. Karen? Not that I want to add anything more into parking, but <laughs> <laughs> um, on, on a positive uh, note, I know that you allow um, on the weekends people to park in the employee parking lot for the town. But it's not clear that that's allowable, and so it would be great if there were a sign there that said on the weekends some a bigger sign, or you know that you can use that parking lot. Because we often say, hey, that that's an area that you can park with people. They see it's town parking, and they're afraid to park there. Mm -hmm. So that is an available space. Yep, good point. Yeah, yeah. excellent idea. Thank you. Yeah. We can work on that immediately. Much better. Yeah. Much <laughs> All right. Um, were there any other, any other questions? So, Freeba, again, you want to brag about the taste of the town yeah, on behalf of Freeba? The town's been going on now for a few years. We had to postpone it earlier this year due to, due to weather and uh, looking for great weather and, and, and a great outcome. So, I believe we're going to be shutting the street down at about 4.30. Uh, Five o'clock on five uh, thirty, five o'clock somewhere somewhere around there yes. to, to bring in all the activities, different businesses, and, and it, it's a taste of what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what the, the goal that that we have is to let the community know who we are and what we have, and this is a, a, a great way to, to be involved. So you know, if you got a shop on Main Street, open your shop. You know, if you don't have a booth stand out front, put your table out front. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's let's all participate. And that's this, so, this Friday. That's this, that's this Friday. Um, how about chamber? Do you want to update anything as the chamber? Chamber, the uh, next upcoming event that we had, we just had the River and Brews, and uh, I'd say that it was a successful event uh, on a lot of levels. 
Uh, the next event that we have coming up for the chamber is going to be the Christmas parade, which is going to be the first Saturday in December. So that's going to be December 7th. Uh, we will have a little festivities down at the gazebo area like we did last year. And then we're, we're going to have the parade again. Uh, so get, get ready. I mean, we have opportunities to, to showcase your business. Uh, in a fun way that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg by participating in the parade. You know, pr print out a few things and, and hand them to the, to the people on the side of the street as the parade comes through. So that's going to be the first Saturday. And uh, Nikki and I and Ray uh, are discussing other avenues that we're going to be doing through the chamber. So when, when, they get, when Ray gets back into town, we'll have another meeting with the town and let y'all know what we have planned. Let's not forget about the zombie walk on October 19th. We had you up on the calendar. Yes. Yes. Appreciate that. <laughs> and that's going to be a big one. So and t-shirts are available at CNC. Yeah, t-shirts are available, $10. <laughs> okay. All right, anybody else have any questions? Bragg writes about what you're doing. Oh, I thought somebody had a <laughs> <laughs> We do. We have a question. <laughs> Just comments on part. <laughs> we're doing the smoke testing and why we're doing the smoke testing yeah um, yeah currently as you all know uh, if you've watched Monday night um, we do have a sewer issue in town it's called inflow and infiltration and it's an issue with our older sewer pipes and one of the things that you test the integrity of the pipes is doing smoke testing and you do it in dry weather conditions and you shoot smoke down through the sewer pipe and if there's any cracks it seeps up through the ground so you know, sometimes people get a little concerned if they see some smoke. And I would be concerned too if I didn't know what was going on. So there is smoke testing currently going on up in the Jamestown Marlow Heights area currently, and so we just wanted to throw that out. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is this right here. This I'm so excited about this pavilion in bathrooms down at the busy area. That is going to just be a gem for us. You know, maybe we can bring back a farmer's market. I mean, it is going to be a huge asset. Because one of the things are, we have these events down there, but then we have to bring in all these donjons. And what an ungodly sight. <laughs> and so it's just going to be, and this will be a reality by July next year. And, and that is just great. And so we're hoping to start construction in March. Um, and, you know, we're looking at about three months construction. But this is long overdue. And this is going to really capitalize our area. And during this whole process, we're going to start looking at additional lighting, get some more lighting down there, some better lighting. Because uh, the simple fact is these acorn lights that we're using throughout town are not the best um, downcast lighting. Uh, that's the best visibility uh, during events. So really I, I truly believe that the gazebo area is going to be totally transformed when this piece gets put in there and we start doing some other additional lighting efforts and stuff like that I just, I'm just excited and I wanted to I just wanted to end on that note because it's uh, I'm, I'm just this is only preliminary design we're about 50 percent there on the design by end of October but this is grant money this is part of the community development block grant you know we always we're concentrating right now on the facades, but this is also part of the community development grant. And so, and, um, that's just, I'm, I'm excited about this. Just on another positive note, I think um, repurposing the fountain into the splash pad, I think that's incredible. Yes. And that's the sort of innovation yes. that I really like to see in the town. You know, <laughs> to take something that's, that's not working or that's ugly and make it something beautiful and something useful. And, you know, those are the type of things that that make front row special. Tim and I can't wait to run through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We want to talk about when to the next, have the next meeting. We know it's a quarterly meeting, but is, do you want the morning? Do you want in the evening? No, morning. Preference. Morning. Morning. Mornings? Morning. Perfect. Is 8 too early, or do you want to shift to 8.30? 8. 8. 8. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, well I'm going to do the same thing. Everybody else will be here at 8 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to thank Down Home Comfort Bakery for working with us and please, bringing in their special take treats. Some with you. There's yeah. Lots there. yeah, we appreciate that. Any other comments? Anybody else? Anything we need to? Joe's door. Our doors are always open. Please. What date for the next meeting? It, well, I'll send out the notice. I'll look at I don't have my calendar in front of me. I apologize. Um, it'll be a quarterly meeting, so three months from now. 
but that's the end of December. Mm -hmm. So when do we want to move it to? Um, you want to do it, the, say, the week before? Do you, you want to... End of, end of November. End of November? The ninth is what you're, you're suggesting? The ninth or the sixteenth of November. Monday morning, Joe. Yeah. Oh, no, that's fine. I just remember, I've made a commitment to y'all. October twenty eighth, I will provide a platform for y'all to speak about the events, parking, and any other issues. Did you feel need to be addressed by town council in the in, in our business? Thank you, Jeff. October if it needs to be a Wednesday, the November 11th or the 18th. Yeah, 11th or 18th. I was just looking. Okay. Keep it Wednesdays. Yeah, Keep it Wednesdays. Okay. Do we have a preference on the date then? Yeah. 11 or the 18th. 11 or the 18th. Do you have a preference? We have the 11th. The 11th it is. Monday. Yeah. Monday. No, November. November 11th, right? Oh, December, okay, okay. All right. December 11th. 830? 8. 8. He'll be late to the morning. He'll be late to the morning. David Downs, Frankfurt, guys. December 11th, 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. here. Um, again, meanwhile, please call us. Let us know if there's any issues, concerns. Before they become issues and concerns, let's talk about this stuff. Um, thank you, Joe. Anybody else? We're good? Happy Wednesday. Thank you all.